To paint or to stain? That is the question. I got this piece at auction for $180 and it is time to flip it. It is a Franklin Shockey sculpted pine dresser, which in their heyday were super valuable. It probably could still hold its value a little bit. It's high quality, but it is made from pine, all solid pine. So I'm debating whether or not I'm gonna stain it all or I'm gonna paint some and stain some. I'm definitely gonna be using the original hardware because that is just a classic on this type of piece. So first things first, we're gonna remove the hardware and we're gonna get this baby cleaned up. So the hardware on this is more just for looks. It's not functional, like you don't use the hardware to open the drawers. There's a little indent down here where your hand, where your fingers fit in. So I'll just pull that out. We'll remove this hardware. It's pretty dusty under there. That's why I like to go ahead and remove the hardware first. And I got my cottage cheese container. If you know, you know. This is gonna hold all of my hardware. Well, that drawer slide needs to be fixed. This piece is quite dusty. It's been in the workshop for a while so you know how it goes it get a little dusty i've got my lily moon furniture prep cleaner here no rinse cleaner just spray it right on the surface let it do its thing for a little while and then wipe it back and you don't need to rinse anything afterwards this gets it all nice and clean it's a degreaser also so it's going to just make sure that the surface is ready for priming or sanding or painting or staining or whatever is decided to do on whatever piece of furniture you are working on. Now, the thing is this piece does have quite a few gouges in it and they're somewhat deep, but pine is a soft wood, so it makes sense why there's so many gouges. I'm hoping that I'm gonna be able to sand it out. No matter what, I am gonna be sanding this piece all the way down just purely because of the damage and the failing finish that is happening with this piece. I wouldn't feel confident putting primer or paint directly over this, even if I kind of smooth it out. I just want to go ahead and get rid of that whole finish, kind of see what we're working with, and that's when I'll decide whether I'm going to stain or whether I'm going to paint. Right now, I'm leaning towards staining. So if I were to stain it, I want you to comment down below right now, what type of stain would you go? Like a darker, like a Kona? Would you stick with like a medium, like maybe a walnut, or would you go lighter, like a paint wash, like a light kind of white oak look or like a whitewashed pine type look? I think I know what I'm gonna do with my head, but curious to see what you would do if you were flipping this piece. I am gonna get to sanding because like I said, I'm just gonna be sanding all of the finish off. I'm gonna start with the drawers. So I'm gonna lift them up here to make it a little bit easier to reach instead of bending over. I've been liking to, you know, have them on a tabletop. So I'm gonna grab my sander out and get started. All right, I've got a 120 grit going on my surf prep sander. And there are some curved areas, so I'm gonna be pretty careful, but also down the road, I'm gonna use some of the foam abrasive pads as well so that I'm not compromising any of the curvature going on here. So I'm just hoping that this finish is gonna come off pretty quickly with just the sandpaper. That's why I'm gonna do a 120 versus an 80, plus pine is super soft as well, so I wanna try and avoid as many sanding swirls as possible. If I get some, I'll show you, um, but then how you avoid that is to just go down in grit. So once the 120 is all sanded off, or the finish is sanded off with the 120, then I will go to like a 220 and start to smooth it out even more. So 
now that I've got all of the drawers sanded down initially, which it really didn't take me too long um, with the 120 grit, I am gonna now move to a 220 grit. And the reason being is because we just wanna make sure that we're smoothing everything out and that it's gonna be able to take the stain really well. Oh, maybe just told you what I'm thinking of doing, for sure. But I am seeing like a little bit of sanding swirls. Um, it's hard to see, especially when it is a light wood like this, when you sand it back. So and something that you can do is actually like spray it with some water to darken it up a little bit. And then that'll kind of act as like, okay, if I put stain on this, this is maybe not the shade it'll look, but definitely the darkness and it'll it'll help pop out any sanding swirls that you may see so i'm going to spray a little bit of water on this just so that i can potentially show you guys what the sanding swirls look like so that you can look out for them so that you don't have to like the worst thing would be if you were sanding and then you went to stain, but you didn't see the sanding swirls, and then you could see them when you stained, and then you have to go back and sand all that back again, and then you have to stain again, and it's just repeating processes when you can avoid it if you are just doing your due diligence and really paying attention to what the wood looks like. So let me grab some water and we'll show you. Let's see if any pop out. Honestly, did a pretty good job. There's a couple spots. There's some swirling right here. Otherwise, I didn't do too bad of a job on this specific drawer, so I should be good to go ahead and just sand with my 220 grit. And also, even if you don't have the sanding swirls after the 120 grit, it's still a good idea to go up in grit to the 220 because it's just gonna give you a little bit of a smoother finish and then it'll also help the stain accept it. Like the pores are still really open at a 120. We wanna close them in a little bit, but not so much like a 400 grit uh, because it won't soak up the stain quite as much. But I'm gonna let that dry. And in the meantime, I'll do the 220 on the next drawer. Let's do it. One drawer, done. Ready for stain. Time to move on to the body of the dresser because the drawers are all finished up. That's exciting. So this should be pretty much the same exact thing. We're gonna use 120 grit and then move up to 220 and smooth it out with the foam pad. I'm gonna leave it like on its back for now because it's always easier to sand downward instead of like upward, if that makes sense. So like sanding like this to me is easier than sanding like this. So we'll move it once I get this front facing edges all sand it down and then probably the legs too since I'll have access to them right here. Okay, it's time for the top. This is the spot that has the most gouges, so I'm just kind of going to go slow and sand everything out. So this top finish is definitely way more durable, I guess you could say, than the rest of it has been. So it's, I'm assuming they maybe put like more protective than, um, varnish over the top just because it's the top and it needed to be protected more. So the sander is working for sure. I switched to an 80 grit and it's definitely coming off, but I'm curious to see if a scraper, my carbide scraper here, will help me get just that layer of varnish off and it'll make sanding a little bit quicker. So I still need to be careful not to like go too far down into the wood because again, soft wood, pine, gotta be careful. But since this is solid wood, I don't have to worry about like going through any veneer or anything like that. I don't know, I think I'm just gonna stick with sanding. <laughs>
is done. Hi. I'm so excited. But I will say it really wasn't that bad. It didn't take me that long, um, especially with the curves. I kind of thought that this would be a longer sanding project, but I think something that helped was that the finish on most of it, everything except for the top, was like pretty easy to come off and it came off quite quickly. So when that happens, the sanding, obviously the time gets cut down a lot. So now I just need to go ahead and wipe back all of the dust on this thing. And then we'll be able to move into prepping for staining which I am super excited about. Obviously, I asked you guys in the beginning what you thought I would do or should do, whether I should paint this or stain this, and I've dropped a few hints, but I definitely am leaning all the way towards staining it, and I think I got the perfect color for this. I want to still respect that it is MCM, so I don't want to do anything that maybe like wouldn't truly be true to that era but at the same time that little that like orangey piney look golden pine look just isn't in style anymore at all so i want to take that into consideration as well so i won't be restaining it the same color but i think the color is going to do this piece justice i made a trip to lowe's and i got all the supplies that i need to tackle staining this piece I definitely have been checking out my friend Erin at Refurbished Ish. She is like master furniture restorer. And these are all the products that she has used over the course of her flipping journey for restoring pieces. If you haven't followed her, she's awesome. She's very knowledgeable about more so restoring pieces and she has great content. She's even got a YouTube channel. so best go check that out because she's getting more into the long form. And if you like that type of stuff and you're looking maybe to get into more of the restoring pieces, wood things, maybe one day I will work up the courage to fully restore a piece like that has damage and using the, the blending sticks and all that jazz. But this piece didn't have a lot of damage. So I was able to just strip it down and then we're gonna restain. So baby steps, but we're, we're getting there. So first things first, I need to use the pre-stain because I want my wood to really take the stain well. And this is highly, highly recommended, especially for soft woods, which I've said several times, pine is a soft wood. So since I want my wood to absorb the stain really well, I gotta go in with the pre-stain first. So the directions just say, we just apply the pre-stain with a brush or a rag and then let it penetrate for about five to 15 minutes before wiping back any excess. And then within two hours, you need to stain everything. So, I mean, it's gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna brush this on. There's really no rhyme or reason for or like the direction that the pre-stain goes or anything like that. We just need to get the whole surface covered so we have even the application of the gel stain later. So I have really been liking using water-based products, but I did go ahead and grab all oil-based products. The thing is with stain, generally you're gonna want to either choose one or the other. So like because I decided to go with an oil-based stain, I needed to go with an oil-based pre-stain, and then I also have an oil-based top coat as well. So kind of just the same across the board. They also have water-based pre-stains, water-based stains, and water-based top coats. It's totally up to you, but you do need to take a couple extra precautions when you are using the oil-based. And one of those is especially with the rags after you are done like wiping things back. You just wanna make sure to lay them flat. I'll show you once I get to that step. Okay, just gonna pop this open. And then I've just got an old brush that I am going to wipe or uh, brush on the pre-stain with. So here we go. It's time. 
time for the stain. The color is called Aged Oak. It's a Minwax gel stain. I'll link it down below. I'm gonna just wipe back the pre-stain a little bit. I've decided too that I am going to just kind of do this whole thing section by section. So I only pre-stained the body of the piece here. And then once I get this stain on, I'll move to the drawers and just pre-stain those and stain those right away. So I've got an applicator pad here and then I've got a foam brush here. So both of those are going to help me in applying this stain. We want to make sure that we have enough stain so that it doesn't dry out too quickly. But if you do have, if it does kind of start to dry out, you just kind of reactivate it with more stain. So this directions say pre-stain, which we did, and then apply the stain in the direction of the grain, wait three minutes and then wipe off with the grain to remove excess. So that's what we're gonna do. Let's do it. Seems easy enough. I think I'm gonna lift some with my foam brush. And this is a gel stain, so it's gonna be pretty thick. I have no idea how much I'll need. Let's start with that much. Um, it's already really pretty. Now we wait a few minutes and wipe it back. Kind of want to do the sides as well real quick, but I don't want the top to dry, but because there's like a seam. Ah. <laughs> So we don't want it to dry out, so I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it back. I just have some shop towels. So this is what I was talking about, the rag after you wipe it back. I'm gonna lay them out so that they can dry out because they could spontaneously combust if you've got them like all wadded up in the trash can. So I'll leave those for a few days and you can even like douse them in water, put them in a water filled bucket, whatever works. We're on the home stretch, it's time to do a top coat. So like I said a little bit earlier on, I am using an oil-based top coat to go over the oil-based stain. And so I grabbed the Minwax fast drying wipe on polyurethane and this is just gonna be the easiest to apply because it's just wipe on and it dries quickly and I can recoat in just a couple of hours. So this should be the best thing to do for top coat. Uh, the stain is dry and it's dried for plenty of time, over 24 hours. So we should be good to go on that. Well, let's get it on. Last step on this project is to clean up the original hardware. I am gonna be putting it back on, so I want to go ahead and clean it up so that way it looks all nice and clean when I reinstall it. I think it's gonna clean up just fine. I have some barkeeper's friend, and then I have some steel wool, and I think that this is just going to help me really get all of the scratches and any of the gunk that's on the hardware off of there. 
And of course, I am going to wear some gloves to get this job done. And they are as good as new. Sweet, that was easy. Okay, so we're just gonna let that top coat dry for like a little longer. It really doesn't need too much more time. And then we'll be able to install the hardware and get this thing staged and finished so that you guys can see the final result. It's finished. I like it. I don't think I'm in love with it, but you don't have to be in love with every single piece that you flip. I think in my head, I thought the aged oak stain was going to be a little bit darker, but I don't hate the color of it. Um, obviously the pine is gonna take it differently than maybe a different wood would take. So the photos that I had seen of this color being used were a little bit darker, but I still really like it. I love that it really accentuates the wood grain across this entire piece. And I'm actually glad that I kept it as wood and restained it. There's still different things that I need to perfect on my refinishing skills, specifically the sanding swirls. I see a few, but it's nothing that's like, oh my gosh, detrimental. I have to redo this whole thing. I don't know. I I like how it turned out. I'm curious to hear what you guys think about the transformation. I'm glad that it's not that like orangey color anymore. And I feel like this just helps it be like an organic piece. I feel like the shape is super organic and then the tone of the wood now is super organic and the hardware still goes really well with this piece. I don't know, I like it. I think it's growing on me now that I see it all together, but I'm proud of myself. I stuck to it. I used new products that I've never used before and this is the result that we got. Let's talk about the numbers. So on the numbers for this piece, I got the piece for $180 and then I spent around $80 at Lowe's with the materials that included the stain, the pre-stain, the top coat, and then some of the supplies that I got to um, apply all of that. And then we used, you know, sandpaper and we used some barkeeper's friend, and a couple of other materials. So I'm gonna call it $100 just to be nice and even. So I'm in at $280, a little bit more than I'd like to be in on a single dresser like this, but the buy-in was pretty high from the start. And that was because I got a little click happy on the auction and I just wanted to win something on my very first auction that I had ever done. Uh, so $280, not too bad. I can probably list this for like 600, maybe a little bit more, especially because of the brand name. And I'm gonna see what happens. I've never really flipped or sold a solid wood piece that looks like this. I've done a couple of custom pieces that I kept wood and I like sanded back and kept wood, but never really stained them. I've always kind of done more of like a paint wash type thing, uh, or I've done a two-tone look. So I'm curious to see how my market takes it. Um, I'm curious also, like I said, what you guys think and then what you think I should list it for. I am gonna be listing it on Facebook Marketplace. As always, I'll let you know when this piece sells, but we've got, if I list it at $600, that'll give us a potential profit of like $320. So not too bad there, um, especially because this 
really only took me about three days and it wasn't the full days. Like I had to wait a long time between coats of the stain. That's kind of what happens when you're using oil-based products, but it was worth it. I have some leftover, a lot of leftover stain and other products so that I can use this stain on another project here um, whenever I need to use that color. But stay tuned for next week. We've got a one day makeover coming at you. I'm super excited about it. So make sure you get subscribed down below and don't miss the upload next week or any weeks to come. I love hanging out with you guys here on the channel. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me and I'll see you on the flip side.